Hey everybody, welcome to That's Good Broncos. I'm Brandon Perna, and this is the post-draft official analysis from a fucking expert. How'd the Broncos do in the draft? Are the Broncos going to win a Super Bowl? Is double bagging it ever a good idea? All questions I'll get to today. That's Good Broncos starts now. There was a lot of drama leading up to this draft with Shane Ray, defensive end from Missouri, being cited for marijuana possession just days before the draft. A little bit of weed never scared the Duke, John Elway, who made a trade with the Detroit Lions to move up to the 23rd spot in the draft. The Denver Broncos select Shane Ray. <laughs> to get Shane Ray and bring him to a state where driving with weed in your car is considered super chill. Super chill. In fact, we've already started marketing a new brand of marijuana in honor of Shane Ray. It's called Orange Kush. What does John Elway think about the new brand of weed Denver will be selling to consumers? We thought the price was right. The first round of the draft is the biggest joke of them all but the NFL has done a magnificent job at selling the draft to us as a must-watch football spectacle. Because if you don't watch the draft, you're not a real fan. And if you don't boo the commissioner, you're a pussy. This just in. Roger Goodell's favorite player from the draft is Cedric Obuhi, because Goodell loves to get Obuhi'd before every fucking pick. If you follow me on Twitter, at Brandon Perner, then you know I think people who get paid to make mock drafts have the easiest job on earth. And to prove it, I accurately predicted the Denver Broncos entire draft with my very own mock draft, as you can see here. The most annoying part of the draft had to be the four hour lead up to it. If any of you were on Twitter before the draft began, then you probably saw this stupid tweet about Dante Fowler Jr. spiked golden shoes. Then you saw ESPN tweet about it and Bleacher Report and Xfinity Sports and Fox Sports and the NFL and the NFL Network. That's redundant. Andrew Siciliano, Michael Fabiano, on and on and on. They kept tweeting about the motherfucking shoes. The only way I want to hear about what a 20 year old man is wearing on his feet is if he's wearing one of these. That's right, a lampshade. That's what we call putting on the shades. Kids, buy some lampshades, put them on your feet, wear them to the draft, cause the NFL media will tweet the, the will tweet about it. I think the NFL should allow teams that made terrible draft picks the year before to be able to return that pick with their current second round selection. A team like the Cleveland Browns could then return Johnny Manziel because he's broken. The broken players who are returned would be given a choice. They can either work at Walmart or submit themselves to the new NFL all HGH team where they are allowed to take any banned substances they want and play in football games against each other so the greatest scientists on earth could really study the long-term effects of steroids, HGH, GMOs, cocaine, marijuana, and Nutrisystem. A lot of the NFL draft experts want to already give draft grades to teams, which is fucking ridiculous because you're not gonna know what kind of player you have for probably a couple years. But since I wanna be one of the NFL experts, I'm giving the Broncos a draft grade of FB for Shane Ray, which means fucking badass after he said this. And we're gonna tear quarterbacks' heads off. That's what I call football. Back to you! And we're gonna tear quarterback's heads off. The craziest story from this year's draft has to be about the offensive tackle from LSU, Lyle Collins. He's currently waiting to be questioned by Baton Rouge police about the murder of his ex-girlfriend. The police have stated Collins is not a suspect, 
but didn't have the courtesy to wait until after the draft to make this announcement. In my opinion, this is actually a good sign for Collins. Because historically speaking, if you are a player who's questioned about a murder, the chances are you will end up being one of the best players at your position of all time. My favorite moments from the draft were when Roger Goodell butchered Marcus Mariota's name. Marcus Mariota. How does he not know how to pronounce the second most popular player's name in the draft? Marcus Mariota. Oh yeah, maybe because he doesn't know jack shit about football. Mariota. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Broncos. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Go like That's Good Broncos Facebook page and follow me on Twitter at Brandon Perna and pray, pray to God that Shane Ray, Von Miller, and Demarcus Ware become the most vicious pass rushing trio to ever set foot on a football field. That's what Elway calls a surefire fuck you.